Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Tyson Fury and Dillian White all weighed in ahead of their showdown at Wembley. So Tyson Fury, 264 pounds on the scale. Dillian White, 253. So in this video, we'll talk about those weights and also what it could mean for the fight because there's some interesting things coming out of the way. And some of it, I think, after the open workout earlier this week, we saw it coming. But uh, I think the tactics are quite clear for both guys. So we'll start with Tyson Fury. 264 pounds on the scale he obviously was 13 pounds lighter than his last fight for Deontay Wilder but Deontay Wilder that third fight and even the second fight where he was what 273 he obviously had different strategies he had a bit more muscle he knew what he wanted to do it was different opponent styles make fights and this style of Dillian White, very different to Deontay Wilder. He brings different things, more offensive weapons and risk for Tyson Fury in different ways to Deontay Wilder. So Tyson Fury has prepared accordingly. We knew that he had a nutritionist in his camp for about four or five months in the build-up to this fight. So he was always going to be looking to come down, eat well, you know, have the fitness high and 264 pounds. Clearly, he's going to box a bit more, move a bit more. When Dillian White is fresh, Tyson Fury is going to be a bit more elusive. You're going to have a guy in White who's going to be tracking forward, applying pressure, trying to get to the inside. Tyson Fury doesn't want to you know, be a static target, doesn't want to be uh, too heavy, have too much lard on him that's going to you know, slow his feet, but also potentially slow him down the later in the fight that it gets. First few rounds, maybe it's not going to be so much of an issue as if he was uh, a little bit heavier, but at 264, he has options and he's likely to be a bit more fleet of foot, try to use the height and the reach against Dillian White, make Dillian White try to come to the inside. So then he can may maybe walk him onto something but also I expect he will be trying to jab his head off uh, a la the Chisora 2 fight there's a very different sort of um, Manhattan going on here in terms of the heights about four or five inches in terms of the advantage to Tyson Fury why not use it in this fight and I do expect to see him at times boxing southpaw we have seen in that in the build-up but it's not to say that he's just going to be boxing exclusively southpaw but i do think we are going to see a bit of that i think tyson fury is going to mix it up he knows dillian white very well has sparred a number of rounds with him white was a former sparring partner they were once very close so you know these guys are known to each other and this is going to help both guys plan for each other in a sense, but also they know their weaknesses. They know each other. Even though this is a number of years ago, they've still got a decent read on each other and how each other fights and how each other, you know, the little intricacies that maybe you wouldn't get just through having a 12 round fight against someone. So I think that sort of stuff is that sort of ace in the hole for both these guys in terms of their planning and preparation. And it's the execution now. And Tyson Fury won't want to be on too many of those uh, left hooks. And the right hand for Dillian White is also a weapon. But I would say as well, and there seems to be a bit of a myth that Tyson Fury is unhittable. And he has been down in a number of fights. Uh, even before he won the world title, he was down in a number of fights. So he's going to have to watch out for things like the overhand right. But we know he's got good powers of recovery. He's gotten up off the deck multiple times. And we also know that he can ride and roll shots, all that sort of thing. So defensively, he can be very slick and being at a lower weight is going to help him as well. But also, I think one thing people maybe haven't considered is that Tyson Fury is going to try to push the fight. I think he's going to want to fight at a pace that's going to make it uncomfortable for Dillian White the later the fight goes. Not that White's in bad shape, because that uh, couldn't be further from the truth, but Tyson Fury has seen it with Dillian White in the past, as we all have. Dillian White can slow down later in fights. So I expect early on Tyson Fury is going to be utilizing the ring, utilizing the height, his reach, you know, his sort of mobility within the ring, throwing a lot of jabs. I think he wants to make Dillian White work when White won't want to, because White will be happy 
just coming forward, applying pressure, taking little breathers here and there. And Tyson Fury, I don't think he will want to let him. I think he want to have Dillian White burning up energy, be that nervous energy or the, the expectation something's coming back at him. If it's just constant jabs, even if they're flicking type jabs coming at him. Dillian White has to deal with that, and that's all gonna and that's all gonna take something out of him in some way. So I expect Dillian White will be under pressure from Tyson Fury's volume. But for Dillian White, 253 pounds is actually a pretty good weight. They were making at the press conference a bit of a deal that this is five pounds or so heavier than the Pavitkin rematch. I don't think that matters too much. I mean, where Dillian White has really had trouble and gassed badly in fights, he's been closer to about 260. So this weight, I think, does balance the need of Dillian White to be strong, to be powerful, not to be giving up too much, but also to have something in the tank to go the rounds. Because he knows, he knows Tyson Fury is probably going to try to take him deeper in the fight and drown him and um, try to sort of drain his gas tank which you know inevitably could happen anyway but I think Dillian White is at a good weight where he'll feel comfortable he looks strong he looks powerful I think this is a case uh, this fight he needs to come forward and make things happen but obviously he's going to have to take some risks risks but how he gets to the inside being the, the much smaller man here with the, the height and reach disadvantages it's important can't just have the earmuffs on with no nuance jumping in because he'll that'll be like a gift for Tyson Fury he's going to need to have a few wrinkles to his game throw a little have a little bit of nuance in there he is going to have to try to utilize a little bit of head movement um, you know foot feints head feints try to create some angles for himself different entry points and maybe he needs to come in you know sometimes a little bit lower make himself a smaller target I think he just needs to to mix it up a little bit because if he doesn't Tyson Fury is going to clock on to what he's doing and it won't take him long and once Tyson Fury reads his patterns if he's pretty predictable that's bad news for Dillian White but once he gets to the inside he's got to make it count and I think the body shots that's going to be key because Tyson Fury 264 coming in lighter we know he can go 12 he's shown us he can go 12 even heavier than 264 but 264 does present some challenges for Dillian White in terms of Fury will be more fleet of foot so when he gets to the inside he needs to be able to make it count try to sap Tyson Fury's body. Like I said, there, there is this myth that Tyson Fury is still 2015 Tyson Fury and unhittable. Dillian White is going to catch up with Tyson Fury at some point. May not be clean. I mean, he's just got to try to go in there and land what he can and try to get some of his best work away and hope that it does start to slow Fury down because the, you know, starts chopping that tree down with body shots. It is going to have an effect on Tyson Fury and uh, reportedly from the sparring as per Dillian White previously has said, it was body shots which gave Tyson Fury the most trouble. And that's obviously something he can't really get out of the way as easily as moving his head. So it is going to be an easier target than going head hunting. But we know Dillian White, the body snatcher, he is left hook happy, body and head. He's going to have to make that punch count. But the right hand and maybe the sort of slightly looping overhand right is going to be something that's going to be a valuable, valuable weapon for him as well. But he's going to have to really try to use his physicality as well. Uh, those things that he's known for, his uh, roughhouse tactics, he said in the press conference, by any means necessary. And in the past, we've seen him leaning on fighters, trying to push them around a little bit sort of uh, dirty with uh, the use of the forearm and just really sort of getting in there and using roughhouse tactics. I expect to see that as well. But Fury will probably respond in kind. He's got the, the tricks and the tools in his tool bag as well but I'm really looking forward to how this fight plays out Tyson Fury said it's going to be a war and that you don't want to miss it and obviously fighters always say it's going to be a war but in war remember people use tactics a war isn't always just a barnstorming type fight I think we're going to see stretches in this fight that where it's going to really sort of break out and be highly entertaining and exciting but I think that will be punctuated with spots of it being a tactical battle and I think that's the thing that Tyson Fury will be wanting to sort of just see and test with White. Where's he at? Where's his fitness? And want to sort of drag him late, try to drown him, make him gas out, and then potentially take him out. But this does have the potential to be a very fun fight to watch. 
but I don't think it's going to be all action all of the time. I mean, it could be wrong, but I just don't think with Tyson Fury, the weight that he's come in, that he's just going to try to bang it out and come forward and take Dillian White out. Obviously, there's a potential he could catch White with something early on, but I do think that this has rounds written all over it, which given this is, you know, a $42 million fight, there's not much on the undercard. You know, if it goes all 12 rounds, I'd be happy if it goes, you know, 8, 10, 11 rounds and someone gets stopped. You know, that's the sort of fight that I'm expecting, that this one's going to go, at least going to go deep. I think Tyson Fury clearly is the favorite, and I am picking a Tyson Fury win, but not going to be shocked if Dillian White wins this as well. Like I've said in the build-up to this, Dillian White is a worthy challenger. He's a live dog. I think this will be more competitive than people are giving it credit for. And for Tyson Fury's legacy, having a win against the top five guy, if he can get it, and it shows the sort of caliber of Dillian White. He might be a little bit rough around the edges, but he's still a good fighter, and he has found in the past ways to win when things have got tough. Obviously not when he got sparked out, but you know what I mean. He does try to impose himself and will himself to victory. But in this one, picking Tyson Fury, how about you? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.